On the 6th of October 1918, with little ceremony, a new era in Australian transport started in Melbourne's inner northern suburbs. On that day, Australia's first ever electric train ran from Newmarket Station to the platform at Flemington Racecourse, a distance of one and a quarter miles. Seven months later, in May 1919, Australia's first electric train service started. The first train ran to Essendon and then proceeded to Sandringham, where the official opening ceremony was held. One of the speakers was William Alexander Watt, acting Prime Minister of Australia. In 1912, when Premier of Victoria, he had sponsored the electrification scheme. As suburban services changed from steam to electric power, the Victorian Railway started construction of two electric locomotives for shunting duties and running of goods trains in the suburban area. Known as steeple cabs because of their design, they proved so successful that the railways built a further ten electric locomotives. The main difference between the original two locomotives and the later ten was the design, with the later ten built with a box-like body. They were known as butter boxes. For more than the next 20 years, these steeple cabs and butter boxes were the only electric locomotives of the Victorian Railways. In 1946, the Victorian Government announced a major industrial development program for the Latrobe Valley. This included extensive increases in the production of brown coal and briquettes from Yalorn and from a new field at Mall. The Government also planned a general industrial expansion throughout central Gippsland. To meet the anticipated increase in traffic, the Victorian Railway started an £8 million upgrading program of the Gippsland Line. In 1948, work started on duplicating the 70 miles line from Dandenong to Bunyip and from Longwarry to Morville. Another major project was the elimination of steep grades between Longwarry and Yarragon. A new line was constructed between Maui and Yalorn and improved siding facilities were provided at many stations. From the start, these projects were hampered by shortages of labour, problems with the supply of materials, and especially in the early 1950s, a lack of finance. In 1949, an order was placed with the English Electric Company for construction of 17 electric locomotives. The railways decided to use electric traction because of the anticipated high density of traffic. Soon afterwards, following SEC plans to extend development in the Latrobe Valley and with an increase in prospective briquette traffic, the railways increased the locomotive order by eight to make a total of 25 locomotives. Work started on the electrification of the line in 1950. Because of the general industrial expansion throughout the Latrobe Valley, the line was electrified from Dandenong to Traralgon, 10 miles beyond Morville. The first of the L-Class locomotives left England in December 1952 on the Dorset and arrived in Melbourne at the end of January 1953. The bogies were unloaded at Victoria Dock. Then after the Dorset had been repositioned at 16 North Wharf, the 60-tonne Melbourne Harbour Trust floating crane unloaded the locomotive body. For more than a year, the L-Class were virtually idle. They operated goods and passenger services in the suburban area but because of delays with the electrification of the Gippsland line, it wasn't until the 22nd of July 1954 that Australia's first mainline electric train operated. The train ran from Melbourne to Warrigal. Just over a year later, on the 19th of September 1955, the electrified line was extended from Warrigal to Maui and Yalorn. The final section of mainline electrification was completed on the 15th of March 1956, when L1150, named in honour of the late Chairman of Victorian Railway Commissioners, R.G. Wishart, hauled the first electric train to Taralgon. So for the next 30 years, the 25 L-class locomotives gave yeoman service on passenger, briquette and general freight trains to and from the Latrobe Valley between Melbourne and Taralgon.
1987, they were starting to show their age. Failures were becoming more frequent. To overcome this problem, the units were worked double-headed as a precaution should one unit fail. In February 1987, they were removed from the passenger roster and in June, removed from service altogether. As a farewell to the class, V-Line gave permission for L1150 and L1162 to haul the 1225 down and 1655 up for Elgin passenger services on Saturday the 13th of June 1987. Naturally, rail enthusiasts flocked for their last chance to ride behind these English locomotives. Because of the interest, V-Line ran a double consist of six carriages on the train. Let's join the locomotives as they prepare for their last V-Line regular passenger service run.
Central to the driver of 8415. Over. Yeah, 8415 Central, over. Are you driving from 11.50 over? 
driver ain't pulled one pull over. Yeah, because you give me that for the times that we
As L1150 departed Tralgon for its return run, the era of L-class hauled revenue-earning passenger trains for V-Line drew to a close. Less than a month later, on the 2nd of July, work started on decommissioning the overhead power system beyond Warrigal. All V-Line trains to Gippsland are now hauled by diesel-electric locomotives. L1150, the leader of the class, entered service on the 21st of April 1953 and ran 2,444,530 kilometres during its working life. It will be preserved at the North Williamstown Railway Museum. L1162 will also be preserved in operating condition and will be used to haul special trains. L1162 entered service on the 4th of October 1953 and ran a total of 2,000,000 164,155 kilometres during its career.